everyone. So I'm Johnny, I believe some of you already know me uh, from the meetups or, or from other histories. Uh, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about hiring agile teams. What kind of concerns do we have or not have? What kind of different things uh, should we be doing um, when hiring agile teams? Um, and you know, giving some tips and, and sharing a little bit of what has been my experience in, in this field uh, in the last few years. Um, so just for me to have an idea of, of the audience, uh, how many of you uh, do participate directly in hiring agile people, like doing interviews, taking part of the decision or defining the role? Anyone here? Okay, quite a few. Great. Um, this is not. Okay. So uh, when I first started um, hiring uh, agile teams, uh, I would say probably five years ago, um, I was wondering at the beginning, you know, what is this thing about agile, about Scrum, all the buzzwords we, we were hearing. And uh, at the time, I was getting a lot of different messages from hiring managers, from different companies, from the marketing in general. Um, and I started to realize that there, there was like a lot of different versions uh, about what is Agile, what is Scrum, and how teams should, should be doing it. Um, then, um, to be honest, I've been hiring Agile in three different companies so far, and I never did it the same way. Uh, I've been adapting the way I do it. Um, and at the beginning, it was pretty much uh, the same way I was. I, I, I always did. Uh, so I was just telling people you will be part of an Agile team. Uh, at the time, the teams were doing Scrum two-week sprints, and in my mind, uh, Scrum was about two-week sprints and. Uh, not much more, much more than that. Um, so yeah, daily stand-ups, all of the ceremonies, or all that kind of stuff. But at the time, I, I didn't get the, the mindset that is behind all this, and so I didn't think about the, the changes we, we should um, be doing in, in the hiring process. So um, nowadays, I have a completely different idea of of what it is. Uh, and so I've been adapting the way I, I've, I've been doing things. Um, I think uh, you're pretty much all familiar with this kind of process. This is a normal, regular recruitment process that most companies do. So there's a need. The hiring manager will say, will meet with the recruiter or the HR person saying, look, we need this role with this kind of requirements. Then the person will advertise the job, will probably um, ask for, uh, try to find some, some candidates, get, gather some applications, screen them, uh, screen them and then um, making a short place to live to the hiring manager. There's one or two interviews or whatever are the, the technical tests and then there's an offer or a, a, rejected, a rejection. Um, so yeah, then I started to think what in the middle of this process could be changed in order for me to be more agile and try to use agile in the hiring process. Um, and then I realized that um, I think probably until 2015 or so, I'm, I haven't read, I haven't had any look at the Agile Manifesto. So I was hiring Agile people without even knowing what it is, uh, what are the values and everything. So this is the uh, background picture from the Agile Manifesto, uh, as you probably recognize. And um, I gathered three of the four main values as the ones that I think we can easily adapt to a lot of different situations, different contexts, and different business fields. Not necessarily just recruitment, but where recruitment is one of these one of these cases. Um, so I think the first one uh, is is the, the most important one, to be honest, and the, the one that we we could easily apply to most of the steps uh, in a recruitment process. Okay. Um, then the second one for me, uh, in terms of and talking about recruitment reality and hiring people, uh, it's much more about making a, a, a collaboration between the person or the team that is making uh, recruitment and also 
um, the team or the hiring managers, so the people that will be working with the, the guys or girls that, that we are hiring. Um, normally and traditionally, traditionally, it's just about headcounts, filling roles for a specific number of, of uh, vacancies that were budgeted in the beginning of the year, and there is not much of a collaboration between, between the two parts. Um, and then one of the, the main things which is responding to change and you know adjusting uh, our behavior and the way we do things to what our client needs. And when I mean client, we always work to a client. It could be most of the times an internal client, but it's still a client and your goal, your job is to, to, to respond to their needs. Um, so, just to give you um, a brief idea of some uh, four or five ideas of what I, I consider important when uh, hiring agile people and before we go to each steps and more specific things and, and try to see what we can do to, to improve this. Um, so I think, first of all, it, it needs to be interactive. Uh, otherwise, it, it doesn't make sense, it, it's not agile. And it, it, in my opinion, it, it needs to be always um, based mostly on, on behaviors. It's the best way to predict success, to predict how people will act in the future. More than theory, more than, more than previous experience, and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, uh, if we are not trying to continuously improve uh, what we are doing, uh, we are not being agile. So, trying to put all, this, all the metrics in place, and the metrics can be different from company to company, but a lot of metrics like time to hire, quality of hires, a lot of things can be, can be done uh, within this, this hiring space. Um, another really, really important thing, feedback loops, uh, recruitment processes, tend to have feedback in the end of the process. And normally it's a really vague feedback, it's not specific, it's not clear. So we normally just tell people, you'll move forward to the next uh, step of the process or you, you have been rejected uh, without giving much of an explanation. Um, as I mentioned in, in the third value uh, of, of the, the slide before, try to, to find a way of having shorter recruitment cycles so delivering value uh, to the client faster. And uh, whenever possible, always try to have face-to-face -face conversations and in-person communication in all steps of the way. It's the best way uh, of uh, being agile and you know, giving feedback, trying to understand the context uh, and engage with people. So looking now uh, a little bit at, at the, the specifics of, of a, a traditional hiring process, um, <coughs> the first step normally after gathering the requirements and the kind of role we are looking for is uh, to post a job advertising to gather some, some applications. Um, and what we normally see, and if you go to a, uh, a, a job um, website, to, a jobs website to, to see what kind of agile vacancies uh, we, can, we can find out there, you will see um, a lot of things that, in my opinion, they don't match with agile thinking. And when you look at a job description, for example, it's much more focused on individual, um, individual tasks uh, and skills and experience instead of uh, the contribution you will be making for a company, the value you should add to a team. Um, it doesn't make sense, it's not agile. So you can be spreading the message wrong. You say, I'm hiring uh, an agile developer and when you look at the requirements and at the role you what you will be doing, um, you don't see nothing related to, to agile, even if you put there all the buzzwords. Um, then, um, so the, the most common things that I, I normally see is anti-pattern requirements. You can still find, uh, curiously, uh, a lot of job advertisements with. Uh, asking for print two certifications for Scrum Master, things like that. So if you're hiring a child team, to make sure you don't uh, do this kind of mistakes. Even if you're not, if you're a recruiter or a nature person and, or, or whatever, and you're trying to hire people, even you don't feel comf comfortable with all the agile world and the mindset and everything, for sure you will have someone on your team, a technical person, 
a Scrum Master, whatever, um, that can help you write the job description or at least review it and say, look, you're passing the wrong message uh, to the market, let's, let's redo it. Um, so this is just small things that we, we should adapt right from the beginning of the process. Um, then, um, I don't know if, if you guys stopped uh, to, to think about uh, first impressions. Um, have you guys realized that you probably made a first impression of your current company on the first contact for, for a recruitment process, right? So you applied for the job, or you have been contacted, and that's the first impression, and you will start building uh, an image of, of the company, okay? And this will influence all the relationship. If you spend five years there, this will, will influence the way you will see the company, the way you will act in the company. Um, so, there are a, a lot of um, different ways of um, making a, a good first impression. And one thing I, I see mainly in technical roles, like software developers, testers, DevOps people, um, is things like, I applied for a job, I'm a developer, and straight away I have an automated system that just sent me a technical test for me to, to assess my technical skills. Uh, you can see a lot of companies doing that, and in my opinion, it's, it's not, I, I don't want to say it's wrong, but it's, it doesn't comply with the agile thinking and, and mindset. Uh, and why? Um, it's just because you're, you're putting a number on a person and saying you're just one more that applied for a job, just make a test, I want to make sure that you're really good. And the test probably is not really assessing uh, what the person will be doing in the future uh, in most, most of the cases. So, what I always uh, try to do and, and recommend to people is, first thing to do is engage with them. Have a phone call at least, a 15 minute phone call, uh, where you can just you know, set expectations, try to see what they are looking for in, in this new job, uh, why they applied, uh, set expectations also about what do you want from them, what do you expect uh, in the hiring process, what are all the steps of the way, so you'll be in line and the person that is applying can, can try to find a way of matching your expectations and, and getting the role. Otherwise, they, most, most candidates don't really know what the company is looking for. You know, they, they have seen the, the job ads, uh, but you know, they, they know what is the role, but they don't know nothing specific. They don't know what you're valuing during the process, during interviews or whatever. Um, and I, I don't see any bad consequence in telling people, look, I'm hoping that you would do this, this and that uh, during the hiring process. If you're not capable of doing, you, and you can mention specific things. In, in my case, we, we always try to find people doing some, in terms of technical roles, doing some agile practices and extreme programming practices like TDD, for example. And this is something that I look for people and I say from the beginning, look, one of the, the concerns we, we have is the way you do tests in, in, your, in your code. If you're able to, to, to do test-driven develop, development or not, or at least if you care about unit tests or not. Uh, if you're just doing, uh, just putting the code in, don't mind about tests, you, you're not passing the European process. So we set expectations just from the beginning, and I think this is what most companies uh, should, should try to do. Um, and this way, you're also trying to demonstrate that you live agile and you're giving feedback, you're being uh, honest with them and saying, yes. <coughs> So, uh, interviews um, is probably the most common uh, step in the recruitment process. So, everybody does interviews, all the companies do it. Um, and I don't have nothing against, against it, to be honest. Uh, I think just there's different ways probably than, rather than the most, <coughs> most common interviews are based on theory, just to see if you know some design patterns or whatever, if you know the theory of <coughs> what your job uh, normally is. And they don't focus on uh, if you actually are able to do the job or not. You can do, you can know all the theory probably if you talk to 
uh, a recent graduate that just came out of the university, uh, he will be able to, to respond to a lot of uh, theoretical uh, questions and a person with a few, year, few years experience probably will miss some of them uh, and it doesn't mean that the second is worse than the first. Um, so this kind of um, details uh, are important. So trying to look for mindset, trying to look for behavior instead of just uh, theoretical knowledge. Although it could be important in some cases, I'm not saying that it, it doesn't work at all or uh, you don't need to assess it in, in any way. Um, and other uh, really important thing for me is trying to create a collaboration environment. And that is about collaboration. It's about between team, uh, collaboration between teams, between teams and, and clients. And in most interviews you see almost like a panel, one person, two people, three, uh, and it looks like it's just one way. It's the company assessing uh, the candidate's skills or capability of, of the job, and it doesn't look, or at least I think most candidates doesn't feel like it's the other, the other way around too, uh, that they are assessing the company. Um, so, Try to, if you're doing interviews and even if it's based on theory, try at least to create a collaborative environment so they feel more comfortable and they can show their, their potential. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so, just to uh, summarize uh, a few things uh, I've talked already, okay? So, the main differences between traditional interviews and agile interviews are these ones. So experience and skills is the focus on traditional mindset and behavior in, in Agile. Uh, collaboration uh, is also a focus instead of just one-way approach. Um, don't, at least I think, don't really focus on certifications, for example, things like that. It's my opinion that they don't say that the candidate is able to, to do the, the job properly or not. Uh, I've seen a lot of Scrum Masters, Agile Coaches without any certification and on, on a daily basis on working with the teams they are much better with a lot of people with a lot of certifications. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, it's, it's not the, the most important thing. Um, one uh, big difference also, uh, and I will talk to you in, in more detail about this, um, is normally, traditionally, HR or leadership, like hiring managers, are the ones involved in the recruitment process, making the decisions, knowing the candidates. Um, in my opinion, in an agile um, environment and an agile recruitment process, the team should be involved. There is no way you will taking a decision of putting someone joining a team without the team knowing it, <coughs> the team accept, accepting that. Um, and then the, the feedback, uh, of course, as, as I, I mentioned, and I will talk a little bit in more detail also of, about how to, do, uh, how to give feedback. Um, so, one approach that uh, I use currently in my micro company is instead of just doing the traditional interviews, we put them to work. Not a lot of times because not a lot of uh, amount of time a huge amount of time because we understand that you know people normally have a job they don't they, they cannot waste one full day coming to the company for us to assess their abilities uh, but what we do is for example for technical roles uh, we always pair program uh, so we invite the candidate he comes to the company he will be with two developers in a room for two hours they will have an exercise they will be working on and that way we can access the um, the candidate's technical ability because he'll be writing code and solving problems. Uh, we can assess how he or she interacts with, uh, with the team, how he accepts new ideas, or if they have different perspectives, perhaps, how, how is he dealing with, with that. So, in my opinion, it's a, a much more rich uh, approach and probably in the same, same amount of time you'll get much more information uh, about the person, and the person also will get a lot more information about the company and the way you work instead of just doing uh, a normal interview. Uh, for non-technical roles, uh, there are all <coughs> different ways, and I have experienced this in two different companies already. For roles like Scrum Masters, Product Owners, Business Analysts, for example, 
in my opinion, the best approach is always uh, to put them to work in scenarios, real scenarios. So we can always give them real scenarios to interact with two, three, four people in the team, and in one hour, one hour and a half, you'll see how that person uh, would respond to a real scenario that your Scrum Masters and Product Owners deal every day um, in your company. So um, role playing, uh, it's, it's really a, a, a good help when hiring non-technical um, non uh, roles. Um, then, as I mentioned um, before, uh, after they pass through all these uh, recruitment steps, it's time to take a decision, right? So, um, instead of just hiring, uh, of having the, the hiring manager taking the, the decision uh, together with HR, we need to involve the team, or at least all, assuming that the team was involved in the, the recruitment process, we had real developers or product owners doing interviews, pairing with the candidates. They need to be involved. Otherwise, it was it doesn't worth it, and, and there, there's no success of a, a new joiner without having team support. This way, if the team will, will take part of the decision, the onboarding will be much easier because they already know the candidates. He has their support because they they assess the the, the technical and and all the other behaviors, so they know how, what to expect from the, the new person. Um, so in the long run, uh, this, will be, uh, uh, this will lead to much more successful uh, agile teams and people staying at your company uh, a lot more time than, than probably uh, the average. Um, feedback. Uh, this is uh, one or probably the most important thing for me. Um, I guess real agile people love feedback. Otherwise, why are we trying to do shorter cycles, always trying to give, get feedback from the clients? Uh, so if it applies to software development, development why uh, are we not applying to, to recruitment as well? Um, so what I recommend here is instead of just doing um, the yes or no on each step of the process. Um, I always give uh, specific feedback to candidates, um, and and this is this really uh, what what we do. This is really what we do. So if they made a technical exercise and it was reviewed by our our guys, uh, then I will send the the specific comments to to the candidates. I could sometimes put some pieces of the of the of the code and say, look, this would be how good looks like for us and this is what we were expecting. Um, and we do this in all steps of, of the process. And for non-technical roles, we do the same. We say, look, you, you were good at this part, but you feel you're, you're not so comfortable doing this or that on this particular um, scenario. Um, this way, uh, you're not just telling them, yeah, you're, you're rejected. and." You're passing a good image, and this is employer branding because they will spread the word about your company, about your recruitment process. I had uh, in the last few years uh, a few people coming back to me, uh, <coughs> so reaching me and saying, Look, I just know your company because I have a friend that was uh, in a recruitment process with, with you guys, and although he was not, he was not selected, he really recommended the company. So this is the impact these small things can, can have on, on hiring people and hiring good people. Um, then, uh, one really important thing is fast delivery. Otherwise, uh, it's not a job, right? Um, so how can we ensure uh, fast delivery within a recruitment process? Um, there are different ways, uh, but Looking at the traditional ways of, of doing recruitment, most companies what they do is they start with a specific number of applicants in the first step of, of the process, they then reduce to a smaller number, reduce again, and they will end up with like three or four people in the last step of the process and then compare them and taking a decision um, with that person. Um, 
in my opinion, uh, if you are lucky enough to find the right person and that person is the first one you, you had in process, just hire them. Uh, if you have it clear what you really want from the person, what kind of behaviors, what kind of experience, uh, and they match what, what you want. Why to wait uh, for knowing more people, putting more people in the process? This is spending money to your company. If you're doing more, more interviews you do, you're spending money to your company. Your time is money, the, the, your employees and colleagues, uh, time is money. So, um, what I always try to do regardless of the process is, we have it clear what we want, and we don't need a lot of candidates to compare between themselves. If we have one that fits what we want, we hire them. Uh, there's no need for, for hesitations. Um, then, looking at the, the process and the way we can like give a bit of structure and look at the dynamics of on a daily basis of a, a recruitment team, for, for example. Um, so there are, looking at Scrum, for example, uh, and I will just compare Scrum and Kanban because are the probably the, two, the, the most the two most common uh, approaches. Uh, looking at Scrum, uh, we have different ceremonies that can easily uh, be applied to to a recruitment team, for example. Um, and I'm not doing this uh, right now because at the moment uh, I, I'm kind of a one-man show. I don't have a whole team, but I had it in the past, and we were doing uh, some of, of these uh, things. Um, so you can do planning meetings, for example, in the beginning of, of the process. You then can define <coughs> acceptance criteria for the role. You're just doing the same things, but in a different context. You can define who does what in the team, who does which in each interviews. Um, all that kind of things can be done on a, on a planning. You can even use things like planning poker to estimate if hiring a DevOps engineer it's more expensive and takes more time than hiring a software engineer. Uh, you can, it's just a matter of thinking about all the possibilities and you can, can do all this kind of stuff. Uh, and this way you, you can get estimations uh, and, and then uh, delivering value as a consequence uh, faster to, to your clients. Um, you can use, of course, the, the daily stand-up meetings uh, are the easiest one to, to, to do. So it's just to gather your team and you know you can update all the team with how, how things are, uh, are going with the recruitment process, how candidates are doing, if a requirement changed, what should we do, should we change something in the process or not. So you can discuss all these little things in a daily stand-up meeting for example. You could do retrospectives in the end of the process to see what could have done, what could have we done differently for example. Uh, so we are continuously improving. Um, then you can use things like uh, Kanban, uh, which is uh, a different approach. I think Scrum is uh, more uh, for realities where you have a few hiring needs, not big, big volumes, uh, and you have different roles, so you can compare them, estimate between on, on the complexity or between on, on your experience as well. Um, and then uh, you can do a, a Kanban approach when, where you can have just a backlog of processes, for example, um, and then based on priorities, you, you need to, to find out who defines priorities. Could be someone specific in, in the business, could be your manager, so it will depend from company to company for sure. Uh, but you can use this, this Kanban approach and, see, and say, look, uh, I'm just focusing on this, this is the top priority, I'm not focusing in, at, in, in 10 vacancies at the same time because it's not doable. Um, so this, this is what I recommend for high volume uh, recruitments with really fast paced environments, for example, where things are constantly changing. I've experienced this and it's definitely the best approach to change things and um, reach the goals of, of your internal clients. So, um, wrapping up all of this, I guess um, the most important <coughs> lesson uh, you, you, you should take from here is the best way to hire agile teams uh, is being agile too. There, there's no other way. 
Um, and I'm talking about mindsets, not necessarily uh, ceremonies or specific practices. That's the second step. Uh, you first need to get to the mindsets and then try to see what, what is better for, for your reality. Um, also, uh, take into consideration that here there is no one size fits all, so it doesn't work in the same way for all the companies. Okay, and I believe some companies probably this doesn't work because they are, even in, in, in software development, they are not agile, although they say they do agile. So you need to really adapt and, and see um, what makes sense, it's just a matter of, of being creative. Um, continuous feedback, as I said before, uh, one of the most important things, uh, and then try to reach your goal, which is uh, delivering high quality candidates to, to your uh, hiring managers or to your teams, depending on the reality. Okay? So that's it, guys. Thanks a lot, and I'm, I'm feeling for, for any questions you may have.